daddy, you got daddy. Yo, who's ready for the big one? Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. I am listening. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone. Uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the on Twitter. It's fucking pathetic. So please, nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad. And John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. Oh. Well, there's no dirt here, but here comes. Care if it's in this ring, if it's in catering, if it's on the roof, I will fight John Moxley. And John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. Oh. There's no dirt here, but here comes Fox. Welcome to the desk. Thank you very much, Taz. Hello, sir. Mr. Shivani. Hello. Man in the mask. <laughs> How are you today? Doing quite well, you sir. You little creme brulee, you. <laughs> I'd like to crack you and let you just melt in me. I would, honestly. Already. Oh. Yikes. We're rocking and rolling. A little idiots. creme brulee, you. I told you we're starting out hot, guys. <laughs> we really oh. are. <laughs> well, here we go. Another yeah, weird promo from Adam Page. Right, Nothing new there. Point, you know, I mean, Joe doesn't have to do much. The, the like I said, another. Another weird ass promo from Adam Page. Man, that guy is a weird fuck on the microphone. Let me tell you. Adam Hangman Page, a weird bastard on the microphone. No doubt about it. Uh. It's not fun <laughs> for me! That's, that's funny. Daddy's here. Daddy's here. How you doing? Chicago Phil. What's up, Trey Walker? How you doing? What do you think of, you know, the man tonight on the microphone, huh? What do you think of MJF on the microphone tonight? You tell me in the chat what you thought of him. Samoa Joe in the main event. Brian Danielson in his hometown. And, man, let me tell you something. How good is the acclaimed? 
How damn good is the acclaim? Because, man, they had that place rolling, bro. This place was rolling. Double J, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal getting the heat, man. The crowd was fired up. That first hour was fucking fire. Let me tell you that. It was. It was damn good that first hour. If you didn't, listen, if you didn't watch that first hour tonight, what kind of crack do you like? We're going to we're going to actually dissect We're going to we're going to listen to that Hangman Adam Page promo from beginning to end, I think. And we're going to sort of uh, you know decide how we feel about it, I guess. For lack of a better word, just figure out how we feel about it. You raised a piece of shit. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I raised a piece of shit. It is the man, Rella. Man, what up, Rella? The Rella. Becoming. Oh, that's Diablo. Hi, Diablo. Becoming a member, bro. Let me explain something. He just became a member for 30 seven months woo 37 months daddy you be my daddy anytime we're just getting this thing rolling here I don't care if it's in this ring if it's in catering if it's on the roof I will fight John Moxley and John I will knock your dick in the dirt oh well there's no dirt here, but here comes Mox. Who the fuck says that? Does anybody know this? Is this like a reference that other people have said that I, I missed out on or something like that? Who says I will knock your dick into the dirt? I, I, I'm just like, you know, this was the first thing I was going to address, right? Like, I will knock your dick into the dirt. Who says that? You know what I mean? I will knock your dick into the dirt. Like, I, I just, I can't get over it. Like, what? Dude, I, you know, I was already kind of like, all right. Here comes, a, here comes an Adam Hangman page promo. All right. You know, this is. This is going to be whatever. Here it comes. Adam Hangman Page. Let's see what he does. And then, out of his mouth, I will knock your dick into the dirt. <laughs> Dude, like... <laughs> I have never heard that before. I've never heard I will knock your dick in the dirt. So many things were done really well tonight, though. I got to be honest. I thought it was great. Um, I, I really did enjoy uh, what they did, uh, especially the first hour of the show. Man, they they were starting to roll that first hour. They they really started to lag though around the second. I think it was the second like. I don't know, like an hour and like 15 minutes or so into the show. I got to look at the times. I don't get the times right exactly. But at some point, we hit a bit of a stiffy on the wall there. And we got fucking Jesse J. Oh, my God, Jesse J. What are you doing, bro? Dude, that was, that was what a fucking show. What a show, bro. And you were there to see it. And you're right, you're right. It had a lull for about uh, 20 minutes. 25 minutes after the uh, first hour, but I'd say this was like 80% completely fucking solid. Yeah, this was a pretty solid show. It was rolling, man. And the crowd, dude, the crowd injected life into this thing like crazy because they were hot, bro. Oh, no, yeah, fucking, oh, there's a bunch of shit to go over, but 
Dude, Ma, what happened with the Moxley promo? Like, there was a, I mean, not just, I know that uh, you're talking about the uh, the page part, but w- was there like a fuck up with uh, Moxley when he was going off? Because um, like on my, on, on my, because uh, I was watching it on the TBS app or whatever, and it like, he had to like redo the promo or something. Yeah, something happened with his mic, and he was like, we're going to start this over or whatever. I was going to actually play that because I, I heard it too, and I remember it happening, but it was just uh, it was weird. Um, Dude, this I, I will say, though, this is the first like time that I've watched Dynamite, and I was literally at, by the end, like, at the end of the night, the very last. I don't want to get into it yet because we're not there yet, but when this shit ended, I was smiling from ear to ear. Fucking, this was fucking great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was pretty pumped up, man. This is a, it was a fun show. This was a fun show. It was good. Uh, it was entertaining. It, I mean, dude, it was rolling. Like it was really, like this was a fun show, and it looked different. They got the new set. Seattle was obviously horny for this because they just haven't had wrestling. Oh, dude, if they, if they carry this into L.A., man, they're, they're gonna fucking kill it. I don't know what happened to Devious Rose there. He was, uh, he's been in the chat. I know he watched the show tonight. He's been waiting to talk about it, and he's not here. Oh my I god, I would think he'd be salivating, dude, because tonight was incredible. Well, he, he was in the chat wow. ready. He was ready to to go tonight. So I don't know what happened to Dave, but uh, he was like rip roaring to go like tonight. So I, I maybe he'll be here soon. But uh, I am surprised. Um, Yo, you um, never heard. Uh, you never heard. I'll knock your dick in the dirt. No, you know what? I mean, I've heard it, but. I guess not really in a long time, and like people are telling me it's in the Breakfast Club. And where's this fucker from, for real? Like, I know he ain't no fucking cowboy, so like it, they, that is something that you would probably say if you're. Like, I've heard that from people that are out in the country and shit. I don't know, man. I I, I haven't heard it. I just want to like I haven't heard that in a long time. Like, I'll knock your dick into the dirt. <laughs> I mean, I just haven't heard it in a while. Like, I don't know. It was just really bizarre. I don't care if it's in this ring, if it's in catering, if it's on the roof, I will fight John Moxley. And, John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. <laughs> oh. Well, there's no dirt here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dirt here. Yeah, well then jump up there and suck it. I don't know, like what is he like I don't know man, that was funny though. But let me tell you something. Oh no. Oh, oh no, it's oh jerk. Oh. oh Oh my god. Somewhere just beyond my reach. Someone reaching back for me. Racing on the thunder. Rising with the heat. I need a hero, guys. I need a hero. I'm pulling out for a hero till the end of the night. And he's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fast. He's gotta be fresh from the fight. I need a hero. And John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. Seattle crowd was amazing, and the new Dynamite setup looks clean as fuck and way less oversaturated. Mm. Great show with the opener and the final match with Darby doing a double coffin drop on Joe after he killed his kneecaps was awesome to see. Eight tenths. Yeah, what a show tonight. Eight out of ten. I think that's that. I might be there. Seven, five, eight. I might hit an eight tonight. Uh, the Soundwave ninety two stopping in and dropping forty dollars. Um. Great, I mean, I am actually concerned about Dave, bro. Like he was fi- fucking re- rearing to go tonight. Um, but uh, what did you think I, it was, uh, Jesse? I mean, not to give a rating now, but I mean, fuck it. I'll just—it was good tonight. You know, it was a good show. You raised a piece of shit. Oh, you're not gonna know. Luis Urdaneta, uh becoming a member. Sorry, uh, Jesse. Uh, all right, Soundwave's up there. There you go, Soundwave. What's up, man, Luis? And. uh all right, Jesse, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, what did you what did you think? Oh no, I was just saying I was just saying uh I, I agree with Soundwave. I am at an eight for sure. Like that was 
absolutely solid. Yeah. It was a solid show, bro. This this was a fun show to watch. Um, as Jesse uh takes us on the tour, baby. Show me the bathroom, bro. Show me the bathroom. Rastafa's here. Rastafa, it's been a while. How you, it's been a while. How you doing, oh, shit. brother? He's back. Motherfucker. What's up, oh, dude? Oh, hi, are you, Jesse? I've been here the whole time. <laughs> No, I seen you. I just, I did, just you were. I know you were doing your thing for a while. We yeah, we haven't had you on weeks. I feel like. Yeah, man, I'm back. Uh, got Whoa. sent back early, and uh, I'm here, man. We watched AEW Dynamite, the first one of the year, and oh my god, you got kicked off the tour. Yeah, that's it. hot tonight. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was something. Like I am, I, I'm actually amazed. Like I, you want to know what it is when you don't watch wrestling for a number of weeks you kind of get like a fresher perspective depending on how good the show is or, you know, what you're looking for in a show. It had everything uh, I needed. It really did. It had everything I needed. Um, you can argue certain parts of the show that, that could have been paced better, but it was still entertaining as hell. Like, I, I mean, there's a part of me that really wants to change my, my grade from a 7.5 to an eight, but maybe it's probably because like, you know, again, there were just certain things maybe I was looking for that I mainly didn't get. I don't, I don't, I don't know really how to explain it, but it was just like, regardless, it was a great show. Yeah, I thought, I, it, I, I thought yeah, it was good. I think, uh, I think I'm at an eight because kind of like what Joe said, there was about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe that out of two hours that was kind of eh. So to me, that was like, you know, that was like 80%, you know? Other than, but if I mean, if they had if they had taken care of that twenty twenty five minutes and the whole thing, I mean, it would have been a fucking ten out of ten. Yeah, dude. On, and by the way, chat roll. I missed y'all too. Trust me, I did. But um, moral of the story is is like again, I am so happy right now with the direction of, I mean, MJF. I mean, again, I didn't really see the uh, the oh, a lot of what was going on, but MJF. Uh, Ricky Starks, uh, Darby Allen. I mean, these guys are now going to be like this is going to be their year now. Yeah, they really. I, I one thing I do I do like I am uh, concerned about what happened with Wardlow, but what I do like is that they clearly cemented Darby oh. Allen as like this guy's an original. He's great. We're pushing him. We're really behind him, and so that's good. And the acclaimed man, they are so yeah. Oh over. God, they're over Just, as hell. Fantastic. The acclaimed. I'll say it right now, with the exception of uh, FTR, even though that they've been conquering the world, I truly believe that the acclaimed right now are the tag team. And that, yeah. oh yeah, they, yeah, they just need to sharpen their skills a little bit, like in the ring. And other than that, they they already got it. Other than that, well, that's the thing. I think Shit. we really need to see that match between the acclaimed and FTR, like yeah, that yeah. big match. Because again, the, the the really one of the big matches that we had. In the tag division last year was, I believe it was FTR versus um, the Briscoe Brothers, and they tore it up. Um, wait, so wait, all- who was it? Who was it all out? Wasn't it, I thought that was FTR and fucking the acclaimed, or am I wrong? Oh God, I'm blanking no. out right now because I'm just so jet lagged. Um, it was somebody's gonna have to remind me. It, it was Swerve and Keith Lee versus the acclaimed. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, he also right did the same thing at the last pay-per-view where I was at. And But again, uh, all due respect to those guys, I mean, again, and I know that everybody's like, well, FTR apparently is not the best anymore. They lost their IWGP titles. Oh, oh, oh. No, dude, that's not what it's about, bro. It's At this point, yeah. it's really how much attention can you garner on every match and everybody talking about your match as far as a fan goes. And No, I get what they're saying. They, they just don't – you don't need like, – listen – FTR is is a top team. That's fine. They claim to the champions. It's not a big deal, you know. I don't know. You know, the, every the best team doesn't have to be the champions or whatever you want to say. Or FTR doesn't have to be. They'll be the champions eventually. It's I don't know why people rush those things. They're gonna meet. I don't understand at some that point. they needed to drop those titles so we could see them on AEW more. Like they they had too much going on, and they you never get to see them wrestle on like on AEW. I yeah. feel like they needed to drop all them titles. So yeah, that, you know, eventually you're going to have to because, yeah, you can't keep up with that touring schedule if you want to be prominent on AEW like you just. Yeah. Said. And all, and also the fact is, is that the workload shot up for them last year. And granted, they knocked everything out of the park. But I think now is the time that they're going to want to wrestle more so stateside. I mean, again, AEW is going to be going international this year 
um, with uh, Australia. Um, I think they're also going to the UK. So there's going to be a lot of stuff for FTR to do, at least being AEW based. And also they can still work indies and still work with, you know, people like Tully Blanchard and Bret Hart and people like that. So it's not going to be the end of the world for them, but that match between two fan favorite tag teams is definitely going to be interesting down the road because I'm pretty sure Tony Khan is already ahead of the game when it comes to this match. Really quickly, I just okay. want to um, I want to say this. If it's in catering, if it's on the roof, I will fight John Moxley. And John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. I want to introduce, he's here, I think, ladies and gentlemen, Devious Dave Rose. Hello. Oh, yeah, baby. And welcome back, Mustafa. Thank you very much, Dave Rose. Appreciate you, brother. How's it going, brother? Dude, Dave, tell me what you thought, man. I know you loved this. <laughs> I know, was, I know uh, he did. It was a great, uh, great night tonight. Um, I can't think of anybody that would say that tonight was bad. In the chat, there was at least you know minimum seven and a half. Some people yeah. were going as high as nine. It was a, yeah, it was I, a good show. I, I was surprised. I did not expect it to be as entertaining as it was tonight. It was it well, was, Dave, it was Dave, off what, to what, the what, races what, right from the beginning, I think. Except for it, we'll talk about the second half, but yeah, yeah. I was like, I was actually curious, Dave. What do you think was the main element as far as making this tonight a success for me? Was the crowd? The crowd certainly um, was very loud. Uh, they popped a lot. A lot of people in the chat mentioning that they certainly did, and I'm surprised it's Seattle, but um, they certainly did. Um, I think they, it's because they're they, new to uh, AEW. I think. It could be. Well, yeah, because they don't, they don't come on the West Coast that often. So when but they do... that being said, they the, the, the pop for uh, Darby Allen, obviously hometown favorite. And, 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 and Brian Danielson. That too. Yeah. That too. But I, 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 see... I think Darby got a bigger pop almost. I felt like. But I, I yeah. just think that uh, with, uh, with uh, Samoa Joe and uh, Darby, that match was a great way to actually finish the night, actually. I, oh, I agree. yeah. That was I agree. so good. Especially since they didn't even start the match till a, a bit later, and you got yeah. him doing the ollie off uh, uh, Samoa Joe's back, like yeah, like uh, it certainly yeah. was uh, quite funny to see that. Yeah, like, can, can we actually make mention to this? Because I think this is very important. We need to give a round of applause to Jericho and Samoa Joe. Those guys made Ricky Starks and Darby Allen in such a way that. They are. They, I mean, again, I love great locker room leaders, and I love great locker room veterans, and a lot of people crap on. And them also, you love naked locker room men. Yes. Well, no, you like to knock people's crotches in the dirt, Joe. But that's between you and I. That's all right. Don't worry. No Don't tell anybody. Lick but, the dirt off. <laughs> make the long story short. I mean, those guys are professionals. It wasn't just about oh, just because normally in WWE, if you're like in your hometown, you lose. <laughs> you know, and we've seen that for years. But in this case scenario, I mean, it was fresh. It felt refreshing to see guys that although they can win if they want to or they can say, yeah, I'm going to probably take the win or Tony's like, yeah, let's give him the win. Tony, as well as the young guys were like, no, this is this is what we got to do. And I absolutely agree with the decisions that they made tonight as far as that goes. I really like the uh, the uh, claim versus uh, Lethal and Jared. Yeah, I did. That uh, was yeah, my favorite that match of the night. Finish. That yeah. um, I thought that was good actually, because even when they won initially, I was like, "What the fuck?" And then obviously Aubrey Edwards comes right. in. Dude, it's the way that they. Uh, you raised a piece of shit. The way you raised a piece of shit. Anyone else want Sting to Scorpion Death drop Darby? Let yes. me get this yes. out. Oh, man. Joe chokes out Wardlow, but Darby, who weighs 180 W slash a dishwasher attached to him, jumps on Joe twice <laughs> and then. Never heard woman say they'd knock someone's vagina in. We need Rostafa tour dates. What the fuck? I think I think Rostafa might have been kicked off the tour. It's not fun for me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Where's it going, Joe? Where's it going? Allison t- uh, kicking in our Tuckwa. Oh, Good God, she's destroyed Soundwave! Oh, it's in your oh. Allison! God damn it, it's Allison! Oh, it's 
up. I will fight John Moxley, and John, I will oh, knock Moxley your dick in the dark. Audio jungle. Wow. If the Bills and Bengals don't want to do their game because the respect of the family which I understand because they can't play the game I think the whole league should forfeit to be fair next year is a fruit fresh start even though I know that was hard work for the NFL teams. Oh my god Allison yeah, imagine but, that they they no. forfeit the whole year like whoa well, no way. No, there, actually there are a lot of people are bringing this up it's just like how do you deal with this and you know I mean time's a ticking that you know we're, we're getting Super Bowl soon how are they going to be able to handle this stuff so that is a good point. Uh, oh my god. Well, well, I yeah, will knock get- your dick in the dirt. <laughs> well Allison. again I mean yeah we're getting closer to the Super Bowl but I think and again, it also really depends on where they're going to be in the next couple of weeks as far as their performances are and where they're going to be located. So, yeah, that can also play a factor. But I think as far as right now goes, they did well, but they did well last year, too, in their ratings. Wow. You know, it's almost like this consistent thing where like in January going into February, they're OK. But like when we get to Super Bowl season, then we're going to see because, Joe, didn't you announce like last week or something that AW ratings were low? I mean, yeah, they were down. I mean, well, actually, I said last week, yeah, they were down. I read the ratings, and I said, well, next week they should go up a little bit. So you would think the rating this week could be eight hundred ninety thousand, uh, maybe, maybe touch nine hundred. I mean, I hope they go into the nine hundreds because this was a great show. Keep the shows like this, if they can keep this up for like consecutive, like yeah, yeah. consecutively, consistently, I there's no reason they shouldn't go up, even if it's incrementally. But just to quickly. Sure. Uh, just, I will be shocked if they go over a million towards the Super Bowl weekend. I no. will be shocked. Well, just to go over that this is, last yeah. this two hundred dollar donation, insane donation from Allison Tuckwab. Um, I don't think Allison, no matter what, I just can't believe they would cancel the season. I can see the Cincinnati game never being played. I do think that's going to happen that it won't be played. Um, but, but the Bills will play the Patriots this Sunday, and everything else will move on from now. Um, Demar Hamlin was on a hundred percent oxygen. He's now on fifty percent oxygen. Oh, yeah, he's doing God. better. He's I, doing better. I, yeah. Not, I don't oh, know wow. what that means exactly yet. I mean, but well, starving him of doing, uh, oxygen. What was that? It means they're starving him of oxygen. Right. How can you reduce his oxygen? Come on. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that they're like, well, we can't keep him a hundred percent forever. He's got, you know what I mean. So they're lowering it. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. No, 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 it's a good thing. They have to, they have to allow the body to fucking make, like, to work on its own. Otherwise, he'll just never get better. Right. This is actually something I wanted to ask because, and Dave, you probably get more perspective on this. Obviously, he was deprived of, like, you know, of, you know, oxygen flow to brain or whatever like that. Was, what did he do? Do we even have any information what he was doing before he got on the field? No. Like, in terms of, like, prepping up? No. No. Listen, Jesus. he got he got blasted in the heart. That's what that's what right. No, no, I know that. I know that. But I'm just saying, like, in terms of like any preconceived notion or maybe lack of condition that cop that probably would have. Yes, you know, uh, he got the pinchy uh, seven days prior. His uh, the guy who administered uh, tweet made a tweet, and then that tweet got deleted. So there is oh. that. Okay, that's- but we have no evidence yet, so let's not jump on what might be the issue. Yeah, got it. it's something to think about, but we'll wait and see. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, he's, I just hope he gets better, man. I would love, wouldn't it would just be a great story if the guy came out of it and whatever? And you know, the the it's more likely that he'd probably be next season. Well, oh I, yeah, no, dude, not, I don't yeah, care. At this point, yeah, after seven cardiac duress, uh, yeah. I don't think that the yeah. league's gonna nah. want to let, let him play because you know you don't. No, know dude, it's, it. yeah, you, I don't give a crap, no. but he's not gonna play. I, I just want to see him come out of it. I, I, I he may not, oh, you know, yeah. he he may not be right ever, dude. If if his it's lungs like are to go from hundred to fifty percent, if they did that quickly, that's a good sign. Because they they if they thought that that wasn't gonna work, they would have done it in different increments. Yeah. So yeah. that that's actually really good that they they shot it to fifty percent. So that's a, that to me that's a good sign. I mean, I've dealt with oxygen all, shit for years. All we can do at this point is wait because again, yeah. they got, got money and obviously they're giving them uh, good health care. And you know, also, and also, like they even reported like back like I think it was a couple of years ago he started a um a foundation or something on GoFundMe. And it wow. went from just a few hundred, a few a couple thousand dollars. All of a sudden, it reached to like five million. Yeah, it's at six million cool. now. 
Jesus. Um, it's crazy, bro. He couldn't he tried to it tried to raise like something like three to five thousand for Christmas and he got to like twenty two thousand or five fifteen hundred. And yeah, Jericho donated three times. Remember that? You, the, yeah. you put yep. that on the Facebook. That was funny. Which is awesome. Jericho's giving his cruise money. Yeah, he's giving his cruise money away. But that's that's, <laughs> no, that's time, no, let's, money. let's let's shout out Joe let, Well, Joe Cronin too, but let's let's shout out Jericho. <laughs> Every time something like this happens, and there's been times where, um, what's his name, the the guy from AW got injured. Um, oh, Ray remember. Phoenix. No, the guy who's uh, the pure champion now. I can't remember his name. Oh, shit. Daniel Garcia. Oh, Daniel. Oh, no, sorry, no. Yeah, yeah. You the guy fucking downloaded. It downloaded. He donated fucking like twenty grand to the guy. Yeah. Yeah. The Jericho's so. I mean, dude, it's starting to accumulate a list of Jericho's. You know, I mean, Jesus, Jericho gave that indie guy. Remember the guy who never really wrestles, but he showed up in an indie event, jumped off the ropes, broke his legs? Yeah. Like, the fact I don't understand. Really. I don't know. Jericho, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I feel like he could help. Not that he needs to give more, but I feel like Jericho could help raise more. Because Jericho's good with that. He's shit. quiet about it. Oh, no, no, he could. He could. I mean, I remember back when Perry Saturn, um, you know, had that incident where he was about to like lose his house or, or his, his mobile home, wherever it was. And Jericho, uh -huh. like, came in and just, like, yeah, five he's grand. Like, same here's deal. the thing, though. He doesn't make a big deal of it. He just fucking just. He does it. a bunch of money on me. No, Jerry yeah, doesn't fucking yeah. ask for attention. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, yeah, no, I'm with no, you. yeah, he he does it quietly, you know, it doesn't really, except for when he spells his name wrong, and then he donates again. I yeah, guess. but then <laughs> people still see he's donating, and yeah. uh, that can again because he's not bringing attention to himself. People are like, oh shit, Jericho donated, I'm donating too, so, right? Um, no, that he doesn't cool. need to bring attention to it because people will see that he donated, and they're like, fuck yeah, I don't care if he spelled his name wrong, I'm still donating. <laughs> yeah, that no, part I'm killed glad me. To see Jericho, he, he's giving back. I was getting a little <laughs> weird about it. Like, my bad, I'm for sorry. a while, but he's doing better. Like I, I thought he was kind of showing. Uh, I, I felt like he was like a big fish in a small pond for a while here, and it's like, like, is he even giving a shit? Or is he just happy to be one of the biggest wrestlers in a fucking small organization? But now I'm looking at him, I'm like, okay, this guy's coming back around to the Jericho. Yeah, he's always made know clear that he's there because he wants to help the locker room. Oh uh, yeah, and he and it's He'll showing do whatever now. He's like, you yeah. lose. Yeah. He showed that tonight. Like he's starting to show that what, the the side of him that we all know and love. You know, he's yeah. been showing for a while. He's been showing putting uh, ROH people over. Not only that, not only that, but making the ROH belt even that much more valuable to the point where once they do launch, I mean, they're ready. Yep. I'm not That's sure. I'm not sure if I quite still understand fully Ricky Starks at all, but. He did do a good job with him tonight to open the show. That was a well, good they opener. Have to, they've got to build these stars because otherwise MJF has nobody to go up against. He can't just kill, go up against Brian Danielson and who else? You can't just yeah. go up against these veterans. Like they got to build these stars. So Ricky Starks is. Uh, I'm happy to see them push this guy. And, yeah, you know? Let, can, we're, we're gonna go over that promo between Brian Danielson and MJF in, in a oh, bit. Oh, it was but... so good. I can't we're, wait for that. Man. I'm already saving my money. I'm gonna buy that bitch. All right, Pay we're 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 gonna go over that in a bit, but I think let's just like go back to both Samoa Joe and Chris Jericho. Like I said before, these guys right. are the MVPs of tonight because they truly understand the value of the business in terms of okay, this is why he needs the belt or this is why he needs the win, and it, it, and also going back to with Darby, here's the thing, and this is what I loved about the match. Overall, he was chopping yeah. the redwood down. Old school. Yeah. Yeah. Low. He had to come at him in the beginning of the match. He got the ladder, and the two referees come out, obviously, to spot the ladder, which, thank you, could have been worse. Was that was great, though, him pulling up the ladder. Yeah, no, and, yeah, and again, it just brought more of a focus of saying Darby's willing to do anything and everything to get that belt. You're right, and, and, and dude, dude, dude the, third map. when he was almost He's choked right. out, and he and he like came out of it, and then ran Joe <laughs> yeah. into the buckle, like, and then he did some kind of I don't know what sunset flip type of thing, Canadian destroyer, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the code red, yeah, the code red, and then then the shot to the shoulder with the with the uh, coffin drop, then he goes up again, and then he nails it right in yep. the chest. I mean, dude, that was dude, yeah, really well done. On each other. It was brilliant shit, all those reversals they were doing on each other. And and, and, was, and again, Darby's not so a big good. guy. You no. know, he's, That's why it's, it's so good. 
I mean, right, yeah. right. He's like a, he, he's not quite Rey Mysterio, but like you know, again, a guy like even Rey Mysterio to be believed to go up against a big guy and beat him. I mean, that's huge. I believe in this guy more than Rey Mysterio because I feel like Rey would he doesn't this like Darby hits him hard. He goes fast. And yeah, he hits yeah. Hard and he, he uses his body as a weapon. Whereas Rey Mysterio, he looks great when he does his moves, but he doesn't he doesn't hit him with everything he's got. Yeah, he hits him. Right. He actually hits him very soft, and he's already tiny. So it's like it yeah. is what it is. You know, he's fine, and you know he's wrestling the way he is right now at his age. But yeah, Darby looks like he's shot out of a cannon all the time, like Phoenix. Oh, oh yeah, he's like he's like a miniature version of Jeff Hardy, except this guy will probably take more risks than Jeff. <laughs> yeah, and even yeah. yeah. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, he's fucking crazy. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, Dave, I mean, I'll let you take this one. The MJF Brian Danielson yeah. segment. So good. Go ahead. Uh, it was good, actually. And uh, some people were questioning whether or not this would be a good feud, but I think it certainly will. Oh, they're yeah. going to put on a fucking. He's been play. talking about going against uh, Brian uh, Danielson for quite some time. I mean, let, I mean, let's. I mean, I mean, let's really break this promo down because Brian beats, uh, yeah, he beats his guy, and he's like, "I'm feeling froggy. I want MJF out here." Obviously, we know that MJF's not going to wrestle tonight, but he comes out in his suit, and oh, he looked good by the way. He looked great with that belt in the oh, suit dude, and just everything. He's uh. basically playing. You remember how when Triple H was first the champion, and he would always say. You know what I mean? I don't want. I don't. I don't need to wrestle this guy. Blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Why are you doing? He would always get mad. It's the same method, and I love it. I love yeah. it, man, because he's playing the cowardly champion because he knows that yes, he's the champion, and he would have to defend his belt, but he only wants to do it when he wants to. That's not how it works. I love that type of heat because it just makes you want to see the match even more, um, and that's what a heel should do in many respects. Um, and now we have this whole idea of, okay, now we're going to have MJF base. And MJF was talking about Brian Daniels' mom and all the moms oh, of God. Seattle. And I thought, I and thought then, Brian Danielson was a little sh like good, like a little Shawn Michaels, -y, you know, from the 2003s, you know, or something like that. He, and I know that he was trained by him, but I think Brian Danielson was, a, is a little better on the mic right now than he had been in the past as far as when he's face. Yes. I like this. This is a loud yeah, he had a great yeah. promo. Yeah. It yeah, and and, and and then next thing you know, you we wouldn't know he's a cornhole story. fucking gobbler from, you know, Washington <laughs> SJW, you know. Well, well then we have, have a hemp, at least he doesn't have a hemp belt. I, but you know what hey, though, I, I like love that. That was belt. such a good run. I loved that. That, that was a really good run. <laughs> But I um, like that. vegan telling everyone all the mediators that they're shit. That was, dude. Yeah, I was, great. I loved. Oh my god, that's my <laughs> no favorite from time. When CM Punk was like, I'm straight edge and blah 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 in like 2008 when yeah. he's going up against, or 2009 rather, when he's going up against Jeff Hardy. Like take but, everything uh, you really believe in and then make it heal. Like it, that's what he did, and it was great. Like you know, like CM Punk's uh, go against uh, Jericho, where Jericho was pouring all the alcohol on him. Yes. Yeah. That exactly. I love that feud. That was so good. Exactly. And oh, going even God. forward with MJF, um, I mean, like, you know, he's, you know, re he's really building it. And he's like, OK, you got to be the number one contender. And he's like going towards like Taz and everybody's like, can you believe this guy? <laughs> also, speaking of Taz, yeah. uh, because, because it's the son. I mean, I'm I'm not very pleased when they constantly are putting again, like Ward. Was it? You know, what was the tag team that Wardlaw uh, Wardlow had? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it like oh sorry. Um, they combine the names like. Well, it was uh, Samoa Joe. War I believe, Force like, or Joe. something. Joe. Yeah, War so Joe. now War it's Joe. like, yeah, and there's been multiple, but now you've got um, who was with Hook today? Uh, he was with um, Hook Ho. Oh, Jungle Boy. Yeah, so Jungle Hook is their tag team name. Oh, Jungle like, Hook. Uh, oh, where did they get? Stop. They were on tonight. Yeah. You know what they should do is I get saw, they should I get a, a promo, uh, they, but... they should get a. I'm sorry. Uh, they got dude. They just need well, to the they were on a promo. They were, they were on a promo, and uh, they're going to be taking uh, care of business together. Apparently, whatever that means. Uh, they need yeah, to get. I'm not a fan of using these names, and it's just. Uh, I don't either. I don't. I don't. I think they're over the jungle that, book. But I think 
need to move him into the Jack Perry character and get away from the Jungle Boy thing a little bit. They are moving that. They, they are doing that. They start. They're calling him less Jungle Boy and more Jack Perry. So I think they're actually. Well, doing- hey, next week they might have something big for him. I didn't realize that was his hometown, uh, L.A. So here we go. Well, well, yeah, remember his dad. Remember you know, his, his father. Dad, yeah. Oh no, yeah, I, I got that. But I didn't. I just. I never really listened to where he's from. Hey, I maybe he's from dinosaur country. Uh, sorry. Maybe we can get him on the show and ask him what it's like to live in a shithole. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Hey. What? I mean, yeah, hey. It's okay. okay. Well, well, anyways, going back with, with the promo. So then MGF is like, okay, you know what I mean? You're going to have to be the number one contender. And he's like, you know what I mean? You, you're going to have to go through my guys. And then Brian's like, no, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And then MGF's like, nope. You go through my guys. I'll even let you pick the stipulation. And then out of nowhere, and I've been waiting for this match, depending on who it would be, mm-hmm. a one-hour Iron Man match. This uh, I knew he was, and, you know, and, and th- it was the just, reason why it's interesting. Did you know he was going to say, because I knew he was going to say that match, so it was kind of like, all right, he's going to say Iron Man match. I figured I hope it was Iron that. Man or Submission. I was going to say either two. Submission or Iron Man, right. Okay, and, yeah. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. We've seen long matches in AEW. We've seen 30 minute draws. We've, you know, we've only seen 60 minute draws. But yeah, this is in particular interesting because I know people have said, oh, the, the Iron Man co- match concept doesn't work on like, you know, back in like the WCW days when you would go the time limit and you would be judged by it. But I like the Iron Man match mm-hmm. because, again, I like to see if a wrestler can really be pushed, as Brian t- said, yeah. to limit. And MJF, knowing his background in terms of like, you know, he him even saying in interviews for a shoot that, yeah, I can wrestle pretty much this way, that way. To see him wrestle an hour is going to legitimize him even oh, further. As I think goal. they're going to do a Judgment Day kind of deal where it comes down to the final fall, like right at the end. Like, <clears throat> that's what well, I was feeling of when I heard it. I was like, man, they're going to make this into a big deal, like where it's it's not official, like there's a something at the end where but it's right can't at the, you get the disqualified buzzer. can't you get disqualified technically right and lose a fall well, allegedly well here's the thing joe allegedly brian's like well i know how much you like to get disqualified so there might be a chance that there might be no Ooh. disqualification no count out. i don't i don't know we could get that but you no, know but that, that's a great no but point, then there's though, no there's no there's, there's no right. give up there's no sub- submission in it no, no, no. There's pinfalls and submission. No, yeah. but there, but you could use weapons possibly because he, he's right. He, he did mention that that no DQ deal, or he mentioned that he likes to get disqualified. Yeah, I would so like to might... know what that is because it has all the makings to me of like, you know, like it's it's it gets tied up in the last second, and then in the last yeah. second, you know, somebody jumps over the guardrail and clubs somebody in the head. You know, that's what it. Yeah, and by the way, I don't like when there's less falls in an Iron Man match because if you, you do that, you might as well just go the time limit in a match and not call it an Iron Man match, yeah. or you might well, as well just do like two Judgment out of three falls. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember Judgment Day when Taker came American Badass yeah. for the first time? Yes. That's yes. that's what I really feel they're gonna go with because that was they had quite a few falls in that match, and then right at the end, there was just a big bunch of shit going on, and it was it was not it was it wasn't definitive. You didn't know what the fuck. And I'm wondering if that that might be the route because I could see these guys doing more than one uh, session. They're gonna together. have to because you have to legitimize yeah. the match, let alone legitimize the competitors at the same time. So I definitely feel that there has to be more falls. But I mean, Dave, I mean, like the only other Ironman match that I remember was um, John Cena and Randy Orton, where there was no DQ and no countout. That's the only one that I can remember. Do you think they're going to go that didn't, route? Uh, and if so, why? Kurt Angle, um, Kurt Angle and Brock. I think, so, I think. No, no, that was a regular style match. That was regular. Oh, there was interference, okay. but it was regular. Uh, no, I don't believe that, but uh, I could be wrong. Oh, dude, I'm fucking ready for it. I got my fifty bucks ready. <laughs> You're ready to go. <laughs> I thought Jarrett. By dude, the way, I, I, anybody that says Jarrett is bad or was stupid, like I think he's wonderful. Right now. Oh, my God. Dude, they're so lucky to be working with him. Like, that's who the acclaim needs is guys like Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett to, to get they're them. Great quickly. They really are. And yeah. he, and oh. Fuck yeah. Oh, Dude, man. that was so well like, done tonight. I loved it. Yep. Go ahead, Dave. What were you going to say? No. Um, no, I was just saying that the, it's it's a great tag team. It's uh, They really do a good job building the other 
wrestlers, whoever they're facing, they really do uh, fucking uh, and lethal. My God, man, that guy plays a fucking beautiful heel. He can play a great face, but damn, can he play? He's better as a heel. In my opinion, he's oh, a better heel. Man, does he play a great heel? I also yeah. think that I honestly think that the the rap was approved, and I well, do I like him. Like even as a heel, sorry, Joe. I just oh, yeah. I love Lethal, man, and like shit. Like even as a heel, it's just like damn. I it's hard not to like you. And he's a Jersey no, boy, so he also rap, gets rap, no. Uh, okay, well now I really don't like him. <laughs> yeah, smelly Jersey. I I, I, I do think. No, I think it, I think well, the rap was approved, and I do I, I do yeah, think, I think so too. Yeah, I think yeah. Karen Jarrett or whatever. I think she purposely came out and said like, "I'm sick of hearing about this on purpose." I think she knew. Oh yeah, that was all I part mean, of I it. I didn't hear on Twitter or anything, but I felt that all of that was. I felt like Jeff was a big part of that. Like, oh yeah, that'll be great. Yes, like, exactly. Let's do it. Yeah, but we know, guys, 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 we do know we do know one thing is that Jarrett was hired not just to actually wrestle, but to provide uh, um booking, yep. knowledge, uh oh as well God. as uh, advice in the in the back to just improve things. And you know, people bitching about Tony. Oh, Tony wants to control everything. Tony hired all these people to yep. help well, him out. Not, and Jarrett is like one of them. It's Don't not tell me that Jared okay, well, for me. Okay, Tony, <laughs> okay, so, calm down. Well, you said it. It's not fun <laughs> for me. Well, no, honestly, Dave, Dave to, to hit on your point, like when uh, um, uh, Rostafa asked you earlier, what was the biggest contributing factors to the to tonight and the success? I felt like tonight was so well, like orchestrated and, and planned out, and just it, everything went so well. I I felt like Tony was definitely not the only one. It felt like a pay per view. No, but that, it's been like that for a while, uh, Jesse. Go it's ahead. Been like that for Sorry. a little while. Well, it may, may that may be so. Yeah, I just felt like tonight was just so well done, and I I just it was like it was. It You're was like, right. It was tonight was a great execution of yeah. all these different stories. Like the timing of everything, the booking, like everything was fucking perfect. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think, and now that you've mentioned Jeff Jarrett being in in more than just the wrestling position, I think that that's showing big time. It is. It is totally showing. Yeah, I think he's got yeah. that. He has that old school mentality, and he's back there thinking of all kinds of fuckery. Like, let's yeah. use he this. Does a great job wrestling. <clears throat> I mean, like tonight's match, it, it was really well done. Yeah. 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 And again, it, I'm match, it certainly was a match that made me pay attention. These next six weeks are going to be very interesting because, like, again, going towards the pay-per-view, the amount of stories that are going to be told, also the different rivalries that we're going to get. Um, I mean, again, I haven't really watched too much of that. I've only been watching certain playbacks here and there, but everything uh -huh. looks like the table is being set for basically what we're going to call WrestleMania season uh, for the next, you know, little while. But yep. these next six weeks in particular for AEW are going to be very interesting artistically. Oh man, yeah, and I'm glad that you bring that up because a lot of people, again, I like to call this shit out. Oh, the storyline yeah. is this and that. No, AW may have hit a rut because CM Punk kind of did stuff, but uh, call me Punk. Um, but um, the, the <laughs> point is that we do see a progression of story, and it's not just wrestling, there are stories that are being told, and I think yeah. they're told extremely well right now. Well, yeah, and, and Tony had the first two years. Like, he wrote this shit years ago. The guy knew what he was doing for the first two years. Like, because he, he had this whole dynamite shit planned since, for years. You know, yeah. after the first two years, though, I feel like he kind of hit a rut just in his own creativity. Like, okay, now yeah, what are we know, doing? It's, it basically, that's when COVID hit. So there is that. No, well, the, no, yeah, okay, that, uh, fair, that's fair. Um, I just based on what I've heard about Tony and what I've what I've come to understand and learn is, he, I feel like he the first couple of years are really well done because I feel like he he he, yeah, he had a long time to plan this. You know, it's like it's like when a band makes their first album, right? You've had your whole life to make this album, and then you're you're pushed to make the second and the third quickly. It's like and the it's like the Matrix. He's got help. Yeah, yeah, no. no, no, it's like, it's like, no, no, it's not, I shouldn't have said anything, you're in the middle of talking, um, but no, 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 you're right, he's got all this help now that, that can 
help um, hold him up a little bit because he was all by they're himself. Helping, they're helping different divisions. It's not yeah. like there's just one person managing things as in the past. You've got a female who's managing yeah. the female wrestling. You got Jared who's managing. You who's mean managing Kenny Omega? Certain aspects of the, of the main booking. You've got fucking Jericho. Uh, yeah, all these people. Sorry, Jared. Who's I'm helping gonna... with the female division? Uh, I can't remember her name. But he hired he hired her specifically to to manage the uh, the female booking. Oh. But at any rate, I mean, again, overall tonight, as we as everybody's been echoing, and also in the chat, I mean, again, tonight was above it all, like you know, great. And again, depending on, on how you grade it, seven point five, eight, eight point five, whatever. It's got to be a minimum seven five, man. Holy yeah, it, it, this is this was a knock out of the park for at least for me, yeah. and this is a good way to start the year. What is going to be even interesting, as we were talking about before, going towards uh, Super Bowl Sunday, you know, can they maintain and also depending on where they're going to be at in cities. And I would, wouldn't be surprised if all the cities that they go to within the next couple of weeks are really going to like help in in terms of strategically maintain the ratings. So like I said, I that crowd, so. Dude, that yeah. crowd, they're going, they're going to Manitoba in, um, in March. Manitoba right. In March. Dude, I, I I wish I could get to the forum because I'm I'm sitting there going fuck I want to get there I want to we'll all be this. there too I'm birthday man heart I can't wait to be freezing cold in Manitoba in March With my brother Owen <laughs> and here's the thing it's gonna be very cold out there AEW couldn't have come in June you couldn't have come in July but no you come to Winnipeg Manitoba in the coldest time of the year fuck yourself. Yeah, but you know what's going to be wrestling that day is um, it's going to be um, Omega, who is yeah. from uh, Winnipeg, and it's yes. also going to be uh, Jericho as well, who's also from Winnipeg. I think uh, you're also going to get oh. um, what's his name? Um, the guy looks like me. What's his name? Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, Cyrus the virus. Yeah, he's going to be there too. So a bunch of Winnipeggers. Well, I hope you guys join me. Here's the thing: I'm going to suck someone's dick off. You know, we're going to throw it in the dirt. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna suck That's someone's true. dick in the dirt. I'll pound dick into the dirt all I can in Manitoba, Canada, in March 2023. And here's the thing: I'm gonna dig up every single one of your family members and then suck on their bones in front of your family and remaining family if you have any left. And then I'm gonna chop them up into pieces like that Idaho. All right, here's the thing. John Moxley and John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. In the dirt. I like I like Moxley's response to that, but man is fucking Cole. Just he's he's lacking. He's lacking when it comes to the promos. <laughs> he's weird. It's a weird promo, man. Where, where's the Tolly shirt tonight? I thought he would wear another fucking Dolly Parton shirt. You know, yeah. he's just so weird. I was going to, we got to go to this promo. I mean, it's almost worth, like, listening to the whole thing in a way I, to I me. I don't like, he, he both of the promos are fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's the way, it's like he's so passive and, like, uh, not quite sure. And it's like he's, like, oh, my God, he'd probably do better in WWE with their script. No, yeah, no, he was pure when he fucked with CM Punk that one night. That's the only promo I've ever heard him be all confident in. Which one? The one that like, was terrible? The one where like he punched him at the end or whatever. He's like, it's not about what you do just in front of the camera, but behind the camera. That shit. I remember the promo he's talking. Oh, talking about. the one where he kind of redeemed himself a little bit, and then yeah, people. Yeah, it was one of, the, one of the few fucking good promos. But okay. yeah, he... yeah, like it was a good. That was like one of the best yes. promos I've seen him do. You're right, and people said that he copied one of his older promos, and he kind of did. So uh, yeah, but you're right. I know what you're talking about, but that's why I think he'd be better. In WWE, because it seems like he plans out his promos very carefully, even though it doesn't sound like it. But that's the real problem. Is All that right, he does uh, that. it's been called out for me. I will admit it. It's uh, not Cole. It's Page. Page, Hang yeah. Page. Oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Again, also too many Adams and too many Coles. Yep. And Adam <laughs> Cole is too busy playing on Twitch right now. He ain't, you know. Yeah. Also, what is this obsession with the video games and stuff? Now they have a belt for that. Well, what's this guy in the crowd? Take me home tonight. Let me look at this guy, bro. Dude, that guy looks like if Elton John was a bro guy. Like, what is this? Oh my god! Look at this. What's it? Like Rocket man in the dirt. Tonight I'm gonna get mad and punch someone. 
Rocky man. Oh, oh God. Look, he's probably gonna beat his wife like Dana White. Hold Look on, at her. hold on. Hey, that looks like a thin uh, fucking Rojas there. Oh. The Rojas. oh my. If Mark David Chapman was Elton John's roadie, he's right. Mm -hmm. Look at the girl to the right. She's like, I'm so uncomfortable around all these woke idiots. I'm a I'm Republican. Aaron Johnson in the chat says the pricing is ridiculous for the Winnipeg show. I I don't doubt it. I mean, yeah. these prices. But then again, wow. if if you were to go see WWE in Winnipeg, I'm sure it'd be just as pricey. If you want to, yeah. Get, uh, don't they have don't they important. have like sale dates where you get a good deal or what the fuck? No, because yeah, the, the, the no because. They're traveling such long distances on this stretch, and it's almost like a commodity to see them. The WWE, like Dave just said, has done something similar recently. But so AEW's ticket prices are up because when is the next time they'll be in they Winnipeg? They really should do a fan. Yeah, and you know what? What, what the fuck else is there to do in fucking Winnipeg? Yeah. Other than watch the Jets lose. Sorry, I love the Jets, but uh, come on. Um, oh, wow. So it's like, what's the fuck else? Watch a polar bear fucking break into your car? No, you're going to go watch AEW. Come on. They should do. They should do what like Slipknot, like Maiden does, where like you you have a you pay like thirty five bucks a year or whatever it is, and you get first dibs on all the tickets before the uh, general audience, and and you get a good deal because you're a fucking fan. You you know. Just want to say like, shout out really to the uh, Pittsburgh fan here. How did the Bruins ass taste in the Winter Classic the other day? Ooh. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Burn. That's, that's 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 dick in the mud. I'm sorry. Dude, I could not get over the Bruins logo, bringing back the old tiger fucker logo. And like, I, I was talking, dude. Leah was like, I was like, Leah, which which jersey do you want to get? The new one? The, they brought back the 2000 jersey, the Pooh Bear jersey. Um, and then and then the, the Winter Classic jersey. And she's like, to be honest, I want the Winter Classic. I'm like, really? But the bear looks fucking hilarious. Autistic. Yeah, dude, the the, the, bear, the Pooh Bear jersey looks autistic. And the bear from the seventies looks like it's on fucking crack cocaine, bro. Like it's like, oh my god, dude. I, I think I I'm. It's so funny. Why? <laughs> it looks so ridiculous, dude. Like, hold on, where? Here it is. Why am I laughing at this, dude? Oh here, look at this. Like for the people that don't know what I'm talking about, bro. Look at look at Marshan with the bear jersey. Look at the bear. The bear's like I'm retarded. <laughs> like God, like. Like, it looks like someone in a mental institute stitched that fucking jersey. I, I love the jersey, though, in a weird way, but the bear does. It looks like it has yeah, full you're, autism. You're so funny. But then, this jersey prevents forest fires. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. But but then the logo they brought back for the Winter Classic, I mean, this looks like a tiger on fucking rabies. <laughs> like, dude, what the fuck is that, dude? Like, can you uh, imagine somebody trying tripping? Trying to get in on, like, like, cocaine bear, too. About to say, somebody cocaine tripping bear, on that. Cocaine bear, that's like, right. That's coming out here. Yes, this sh this should have been cocaine bear. Yeah, yeah. where's where's the white line well, under? Uh, it under like, yeah, Wait, like it's like which, well, which oh you my know God, that does look like a cocaine bear. Holy shit! Which yeah. jersey would you prefer? Prefer? I'm retarded. <laughs> or would you prefer? <laughs> the second one is scarier. Or or would you prefer this one? <laughs> Autism bear says ghost from the. Oh coast. no. <laughs> Only you can Hope Tiger. I like that from Pat uh, Thompson. But you know what? Oh my God. Are you reading this? The ghost from the coast says in the chat, Coke Bear Rapist. <laughs> oh, shit. That is so bad. It's so Dude. bad. No, what's bad is these fucking jerseys. Well, what's bad what's it's bad is if you good. buy both those jerseys, you're done you're down five hundred dollars. Like yeah. that's what's yeah, fucking it, crazy. It, it, I dare you to wear those in public. I listen uh, as a Bruins fan. I really do want them. I'm not going to get them. Leah wants the crack bear. Leah, okay. I'm the poop. I don't know why. Leah wants the crap, the crack bear, and I. Ghost from the coast is bear. not giving any dams whatsoever. My God, I'm retard bear. <laughs> I'm fucking. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That's awesome. <laughs> you raised a piece of shit. Um, Devers 11 years, 331 million. Guess referee decision is final unless Aubrey Edwards is there. That's crazy. I want Tony Schiavone heel turn. Who the fuck do Jungle Boy and Hook and still fear in? Jags getting $1 billion in stadium Great. renovation. Yeah, the, the NFL is so weird this year, and I can't believe Devers is getting all that money. Why didn't Bogarts get the money, too? Like, what? What? New subscriber. Confused. Topic Source 3 has subscribed. <laughs> Thank you. What's up, Topic Source? Um, Dude, I like Hook. 
by the way. Like Hook's great. I actually do like Hook. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I need, I think he's good for the company in, in a different way. I, I think he's got a long way to go. A more. I think he's got you potential. Raised a piece of shit. Yeah. New tag team of Hook boy. They Hook. look like they belong in Steady Hall. Yes. Think Sasha's new <laughs> drapes match <laughs> pocket. Think when MJF is in shower, rest of locker room wipes their balls and snot in his scarf. Ugh. Not a fan of another absentee champ. Winnipeg. St- no, that's not what no. he is. Yeah. He's I, a heel champ. He's yes. got to live you it up. You don't want to see him wrestle often. Yes. That, that's the whole beauty of right it. Here. And when he wins, he's got to cheat. Yeah. Yeah, he's been, it's case great. Case I, I like what they're doing. We like what I'm they're gonna doing. I'm going to leave this briefcase right Dave, here. Uh, uh, Dave, you got to run. Right you better run. Son, run. From run, Allison Tuckwatch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. It's not run, fun run, run, for me. Run, <laughs> Talk to you, please. It's not fun for me. I was dying the other day. So I'm like, gonna... Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you, please? Run, you fat bitch. Work around the bills in Cincinnati, and when the other teams are done, just wait for them for the answer if they ever get to it. Well, you know, Allison, I think they're – I don't know what the stipulation is here, but I'm sure they're – see, there's math involved, and I don't want to get into the math. So I'm sure they're looking oh at – they're, they're looking at the sheets, Allison, and thank you for the – Allison, thank you for the donations tonight. It's crazy. Um, yes. But they're, they're looking at the sheets, and they're thinking, what is the effect on the entire league if they just tie, and this is a forfeit or a tie game or whatever? So – I think that's what's going to happen because I don't think it – I think the problem is I don't think it affects the Bills really that much, but I think it would affect the NFC, right, I, for the Cincinnati. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it affects them. I don't want to think too hard about it because I don't know how it one thing moves another and it's confusing, right, because the Bengals are NFC, right? Did anybody know? I don't even remember. I don't remember. The chat will know. Somebody in the chat knows. Yeah, we're not all – uh, Cincinnati, no, Cincinnati, no, the, no, the Cincinnati is AFC. Cincinnati is AFC. So this would affect Cincinnati because if, you know, if the Ravens win, no, it really shouldn't. And I could see the rest of the league even agreeing to give the Bengals a win and the, the Buffalo Bills a win. Maybe, you know, be, I, maybe I, I could see if every team agrees to that. I can see because it doesn't make really much of a difference for the Bills, and it really doesn't make much of a difference for the Bengals. Yeah, but let's take a look at this. This is at the you know the tail end of the season and stuff. This is clearly throwing things into such disarray that they don't even like the coach of the the Bills doesn't even know what's going to be happening, and you know NFL doesn't know what's happening either. Like this really does put a lot of uh, interruption into what was going on. To be honest, and here's the thing: the Patriots, I think, were counting on the Bills sitting all their players or a lot of players, yeah, because they yeah. they they need to beat the Bills to get into the playoffs, and they're hoping, oh, they're going to sit all their players and we have a shot. Because I don't think the Patriots could beat the Bills straight up. Really, it would have to be one in a hundred that they could beat them. So if they sit their players, the Patriots can win. So it's a big game on Sunday for the Patriots and Bills. So I don't know, man. And then if that. So they'll know though. They'll know by Friday. By Friday, we'll have an answer. It's got to be, as far as football goes. But listen, I don't want to go too much into football because this show tonight. What do you think of the new set? I I, I like the set. Of course, it's up with people the time. were laughing about it. Really, before the show even started, like people were dissing it already. Oh, they're trying to be like WWE. No, they're not. Well, it just looks like the current. It just thing. looks similar. The current thing right now is this retro sort of light show look. I mean, I think they've they nailed that. I don't. Also, I, I think it's paying attention to the fact that they recognize that the visuals do need to be changed once in a while. Like, I mean, yeah. AW, sorry, WWE would change their fucking intro theme how often back in the day? Yeah. So this this is at least the show paying attention to saying, okay, let's up the game a bit. Let's change things, you know, the look of things. Let's... Uh, you know, do things a little bit different, and uh, the audience is going to appreciate it. And I think they are. 
Yeah, I think yeah. they did. I think, and, it, and I and I liked them personally. Like, I didn't have a problem with it at all. Were you surprised fact, though that they didn't really change the intro too much? It was not, not for not now. Really. For now, for now, it looks like they might be changing. Like, they might actually make an intro much more like, uh, say, I don't know, two thousand nine. <laughs> SmackDown or WWE, like where it's a, a lot more invested. There's a lot more. My oh, I there's, there is up. talk about uh, about changing that. So I have yeah. faith. I have faith. Again, like this, this was not asked for. This was not demanded by the audience, but they said, "Hey, let's change the setup a little bit and uh, see what people think." And they did it. So I again, I think they've got the their eyes on the uh, on the prize. Yeah, I think it, looks, and, and and it does gonna, look. It's more. gonna work out. They were lo- they were actually looking a bit dated in a way. I mean, I liked the look of AEW before, but it was looking a little bit lackluster or dated or dark, and we were saying that. So I think this is a good upgrade, but I, I do I am surprised. I, now, I like the opening theme, and I've always liked it, so that's fine. Um, It'd be better. But I'm surprised that they didn't upgrade the intro, you know, and I, I'll miss it. And I, you know what I, ho- I hope if they do upgrade the intro is that they still kind of keep that that grinding, driving guitar, you know, that because that's a very, it's really good. It's distinctive. Yes, it's really good like the old Raw's War. Yeah, so like, I'm not me. Can you imagine if they had a sickness or a Roots Rock Riot or something like that, just to even keep the remote electric guitar going in the theme? Right. you know, no, again, I think it's, they it's, need to go back to um, uh, WWE, WWF Saturday nights and have uh, money for nothing. By uh, right, can I? T- <laughs> <laughs> can I talk to you, please? Um, I'm surprised that you know. She's um, probably working. But, well, you're right. That's true. Probably working. <laughs> oh my god! It's not oh, fun for me. Yeah. By the way, where did that sound clip come from? Because I'm total. I haven't been here for a few weeks. Where does no. that come from? Oh, that's like. just from. Uh, that's just from uh, somebody doxing me. That's all. Um, oh, okay. But you know that. That being said, it does look good. It looks like. Uh, it looks like modern. So when people turn it on, this is going to look a little bit better to some of the noobs out there. And you know, some of the. And to be honest, some of the casual fans who might be snobby, who think that AEW looks stupid before, I like the look. I like that this look is changing. I, I'm concerned that it could fall into like looking as sort of regular like WWE. But I don't know. I, I like this. I'll give it. The only thing was, okay. why not make the middle rope white? I think that'd be cool if they did. If they had made the middle rope white. I don't know why. Yeah, potentially it might look a little like. NXT, don't you think? Yeah, it'll probably look a little tacky for them if they were to do that. Yeah. No, hey, I don't mind it at all. I think two yellow belt, uh, yellow um, ropes, and a and a white one in the middle would look well, great. Now but, I don't know if they do and that. There's a lot of black, but that does kind of look like NXT, just to be honest. Well, how about see? I just don't think the ropes go with the new color scheme, so I would make the ropes either white or I'd make the ropes um, red, blue, red, or blue, red, blue, something like that. Oh, it's- doesn't go with the color scheme. It's yellow, white, and black. That's AEW's color scheme. That's fine. I take that. I just think the all black looks boring compared no, well, to. Well, then change it up so that you've got uh, two two yellow on the outside, and then um, maybe white in the middle, and then you got black turnbuckles and black posts. Something not like that. Poles, yeah. Not poles, Joe. They're not Polish, but posts. Right. Or 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 aesthetically. God, I wish we had that. Gold, clip. You take the gold tape. And yeah. put it in the in the middle, and then maybe like the white on top and the bottom ropes. Yeah, so. imagine changing the 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 actual um, surface of that uh, of the uh, rink, uh, not rink. What am I saying? The ring, um, and make that yellow. So you have got black and, and white uh, ropes, but you got a yellow mat. That would actually pop a fair bit, don't you think? Maybe it's not the best color, but I mean, it certainly would give contrast to the wrestlers on that mat, don't you think? If, if right. they did, if they did it, let's say on like dark or something like that, maybe, and it would be interesting yeah, dark, just to see oh, how it no, would but work. Dark colors are fucking purple. Again, no, 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 no. I know that, but but just like before, they would put it on TV. Let's see what it would look like. Let's say on like the YouTube show or something like that. You know what I mean? I like see how what you're saying, it, but I just think that they're very focused on their color schemes for their shows. So if it's dark, it's going to be black and purple. If it's like dynamite, it's going to be light blue, or it's going to be yellow. And then for uh, for um, Rampage, it might be like red and blue. So they seem to be sticking with those color schemes. 
So it's the branding stuff, people. I'm not going to bore you with that. Yeah, well, yeah, they just rebranded very – I think they're honestly this year they're going to rebrand very, very slowly mm-hmm. on a few different things. Mm-hmm. But that's in any business really like we're every, every like two and a half, three years. Well, change it something. makes – exactly. that It's required actually. If any, any brand wants to say relevant – I mean we've seen this so much with WWE. You will be changing your look even slightly every two to three years. It's just what's necessary that you've got to do to keep the brand fresh. And on top of that, um, your new logo branding might attract more viewers. New Because, again, there's people that are right. shuffling through. There's people that are going to watch. They're going to grow up or, or watch for a while and then leave. Then there's going to be you know nerds like me who are hardcore. But to keep that flow of people coming through, buying the merchandise, going to the shows, watching the show, watching the commercials, they inevitably will be doing this. It it it's what is required in daily business. Funny enough, they yeah. went with the the kind of the color scheme that a lot of people use right now, which is either red, blue, or the Miami Vice look. You know, you can oh, see yeah, it on my crawler. Well, I mean, I can't blame anyone that uses those colors because psychologically it's been proven these colors do attract. And mm-hmm. they do – so, for example, a certain color might reference subconsciously to somebody, okay, this is action, red, action. You know, so people associate a color with a, with some sort of feeling or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, WWE's done the same thing. They've used red, white, and blue and such. But uh, it's something that it's just a visceral uh, – subconscious uh, instinct that is uh, activated in people. So I can't blame anyone for using the same colors. McDonald's, fucking Burger King, fucking all these companies, they use the same colors. Why? In- because oh, psychologically okay. it's been proven that it attracts fucking customers. Right. Insane yeah, Rouge yeah. is Poppy. Yeah, yeah. Insane yeah, Rouge is Poppy. It's morphin' time. You're damn right. It's morphin' time. <laughs> no, no, no. Dave's 100% right. Like, it's the same thing with uh, orange and, like, purple and all this shit. It controls your fucking pineal gland. It, it controls a lot of things. Can we make can, can we I make don't this care the new what opening? Fucking colors there are. I want to see some good wrestling tonight. No. We saw some great. No, I get that. I was just I've got the new you. opening. I, I hear you, Jesse. I'm yeah. just basically saying yeah. that regardless of because Joe was talking about branding, colors, ropes, all that sort of thing. Okay, go go nuts, Joe, on designing the fucking stage. I've got the new uh, opening, yes, Dave. It's required because it's going to need to you know keep things fresh. But in the end, a mark like me is going to fucking watch this. I've got Tony, the new opening, oh. Dave. I've got the new opening. You want, you want to see the new opening? I got it. Listen to this. Do it! Yes, we're live! It's Wednesday night! And you know what that means! It's time for AW Dynamite! We're live tonight from Seattle! Something like that. No, not 100%, but something like that. Yeah. You know. Dave Rose with Joe Cronin here, live in Seattle. And I got to say, this place is a shithole. Well, look at her. <laughs> she she definitely oh. dates a, a soy boy fuck. <laughs> like, I mean, dude, check this chick out. Oh, man, she definitely beats her man at home. Beats her man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got the soy boy with the fucking beard. And he's got the 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 the, uh, the soy boy uh, mouth, yep. like all agape. And uh, she looks like a dominatrix her. type of Daphne. No, these, I've got your balls I, in my I've got your balls in my purse. Yeah, no, these are the type of now people. Now like, to reattach them. Oh boy, can you imagine living up there, bro? These are the people that let oh, Antifa God. take the streets over. Actually, you know what hey, I hey, find funny about tonight? Bad, God damn it. I do love how um, uh, MJF was like he was billed. This is how he was billed. Um, uh-huh. that he was contractually, uh, contractually, or, come on, help me out here. I'm kind of contractually, <laughs> contractually, there we go. Uh, obligated, obligated to be in Seattle. And the way that he was tweeting today, it was just like, he was just shitting on that fucking city. And I love that because, but by doing it this way, it's like, he had to be here. We had to force him to be here. So that means that he's going to fucking talk all this shit about not wanting to be at that shitty city. Right. So, again, I think they set it up so well. He actually let him off the hook pretty easy. I've heard him go harder yeah, on other No, no, places. he should have. I think he should have gone harder. But Yeah. I yeah. agree. He was pretty soft tonight. Like, but, but the promo was fucking A+. plus. It was still a great promo. Well, he better be soft enough to put his dick in the dirt. Moxley and John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. Hey, dude. I got to put oh. on his fucking butt. What? He puts his dick in the mud. 
on a nightly basis. I'll you know knock your is. dick into the mud. Yeah, to be honest, it was the best night of the match. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, the guy behind her is metal. Yeah! <laughs> He's like, I'm here. The audience, you see a varied array of uh, freaks and others. I love it. Yep. Hey, dude, not everybody over there is bad. A lot of abortion support here. Hey, if I it was, was like, dude, the entire <laughs> West Coast would be nuked and thrown into the West Coast. Sorry, Jesse, I love you, but uh, no, don't worry. I'll, I'll be the one that survives it. Don't you? No, uh, your your luck. Uh, knowing your luck, you would be abducted and brought to the East Coast and be like, God damn it! It's my dick in the mud. Hey, I'll I'm go sorry. to Norway. Fuck this. You want to go up there to Norway? That's not even how they sound. I'm sorry. Yeah, they actually care about their people. No, I, they, no, you're right. No, no. Listen, I would go to Norway or Sweden oh, or Switzerland. Lottery, Jesse. If I win the lottery, I'll uh, again, I'll uh, contact people in Hollywood. They're always uh, cultivating bodies and stuff. So I'll get you the best body possible. We'll transplant your head and we'll give you a new body and such, and you won't be in any pain anymore. Dude, just give me a couple good doctors. I got it. I love All my right. body. Doctors, you raised a fortune. Either is Apparently good or doctors, in which one? To the fans in attendance before Ooh. the show, they were told no. to not engage in excessive drug and alcohol use. Eight to uh -huh. the show. Oh. Let's Ooh, bring back the corrupted baby. podcast oh. with this crew. Your chemistry is palpable. That's right. We could bring back corrupted podcast uh, potentially. Yeah, we could maybe do it. Let's see. Colonel Stutter. Hey, I'm, I'm game, man. You're gay. He's gay. Absolutely. All the, oh. gay. Oh, he's, yeah, he's gay and gay. Because I was going to say, and, after oh, all this time. Happy. I, I'm taking that word back to the straights. Gay is it was supposed to mean happy, and the gays stole that word, so I'm taking it back for the straights. Well, listen, gay there's nothing from now on. You're not, you, there's nothing more happy than wanting to put it in an ass. You know what I mean? Nah, like, I don't want that. I mean, that sounds painful to me, but then again, it might not be as painful of having to deal with a wife. So. Hey, right. if you're going to do ass play, you you're, you're the one with the wife, Joe. You can only tell me about that shit. She don't yell at me. <laughs> also, Aubrey Edwards uh, tonight wearing her green. You saw shirt. that the fucking green fucking bottom um, shoes. Like, and then she comes out of nowhere and like, oh, you got to stop this and treat. It. Dude, yeah, I'm like, okay, so you guys can end on a smudge, like, but for, for some reason on this match, oh, he, he, the foot was on the rope. The foot was on the rope. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of her work, and the over-exaggeration that Joe and many others have pointed out certainly does take away, I think, from the match. Dude, she slaps her thighs when other people are hitting the fucking super kicks. So she'll, like, her, well, her torso will back up. Her 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 lower body will stay where it is, but her, her torso will actually back up, like, three feet, and, and, you know, it's just like this confused, like, wall. She looks like a fucking you're, guy you're a fucking, when she's on the podcast. You're a fucking you know? uh, a referee. Are you surprised to see these moves in front of you? Because if you if you are, you know, uh, I don't know, like fucking resign and get somebody else in that position. Because God damn it, you're in a ring, a ring watching these fucking moves. How can you be fucking blown away at that shit? You have to f stay focused on your fucking job. I don't know. Like, I, I hate her. Um, I do think that she needs a nose job, to be quite honest, I, and that it could be I frivolous like or whatever. Work, I don't, I don't probably look a lot better with a nose job, and she could keep that schnoz all she fucking wants, but uh -huh. uh, she ain't getting me in bed unless she does uh, do that with the, the nose. Dave, do you feel like over, a better To be serious, though, the over-exaggeration, uh, it just... It takes away from things. It fucking is annoying, and it doesn't add to anything. So, yes, we're already suspending our belief as it is with this with fake fighting, right? We enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Come on, fucking Aubrey. Don't fucking go so over the top that it just becomes like we're now starting to look at you and not the match. I'm sorry. Well, I, gotta be blunt. And I love you, Tony uh, Khan. Call me. But like, you, but, I mean, but Dave, do you feel like there's any other referees? Like, I feel like the one thing I'll say for her is, all the other referees, I feel like, do these motherfuckers have they ever worked anywhere besides the Indies, or what the fuck are they even here? Like, I don't feel like any of the other referees are even meant to be there. From an argument, I won't accept it. The fact is, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about Aubrey. If we want to talk I, about, I got you. We can talk about other referees. But right now, we're talking about Aubrey. 
Oh, I oh I agree with you on her. I'm just who else? No, do they I'm not going to disagree with what you're saying about that. Some people who are refs in AW, it's just like, what the fuck? You need to go back to Impact or fucking I don't know wherever uh, they're from. Yeah. Of course, and um, <laughs> and and just fucking you know get it done right. But like we're focusing on Omni right now, and I just you I ever listen to Jim Cornette, dude, on the Omnibus for AEW? He starts out when they first came on to the scene. He was praising her. And oh my God. And you listened about halfway through. He hates her fucking guts. All right. Luke Rojas <laughs> there in the chat who hasn't called in. She's like, he says she isn't getting Dave's bed, her loss. Listen, she would fuck me way before she fuck you. And I try to pass her off into, onto you and she still wouldn't fuck you. So please stop it. By the way, let's go back to MJF real quick. I was just remembering in that promo yeah, no. where he's mentioning that he's got wrestling critics other than like we I think he mentioned Disco Inferno, <laughs> Eric Bischoff, yeah, and his number one mention Cornette. Okay. You know for a fact that tomorrow everybody's gonna be listening to Jim Cornette be like, Oh, he talked about me, he talked about me and then Cornette loves him. Cornette loves the shit out of him. I know he yes. does. He does. Yeah. I can't wait to see if Disco yeah. says anything about it because Disco's uh I, I like Disco. He's conservative. He, he's outspoken, and he really doesn't give a shit about what people say. And he hangs out with Conan and such, and uh, he does great shows. Like, show, Keeping yeah. it a hundred. Yeah, they're great. They're so good. Who else but, do you uh, mention? Who was the third I'd person? Yeah, who else? Uh, he mentioned. Oh, I think that was mentioned it. Len. No, he mentioned Disco. He, he Bischoff. mentioned Eric Bischoff. Oh, Eric, Eric Bischoff. Bischoff. That's <laughs> fucking Eric Bischoff. That's how no. you get heat. Mention Eric Bischoff. There you go. No, this. But that's the thing, though. Everyone, everyone loves the acclaim, but apparently, everyone loves MJF even more. That's the. the everyone's got eyes on this guy. So. Oh God damn it! Oh, that's like, him and are, the, are my favorite things in wrestling, man. Fuck. Yes, uh, Pat Thompson, Disco Inferno was underrated, I think, and I will fight anyone that uh, disagrees. I would never have thought so, Dave, except I've listened to him with Conan, and, and the motherfucker knows what he's talking about. Like, he, yeah. it, he maybe... You know. He's one of the people that I looked at uh, wrestler-wise and said, holy fuck, these people aren't fucking, like, troglodytes. They're not fucking, you know... Uh -huh. uh, cavemen that drag their hands on the ground like they, they actually know shit him and chavo guerrero jr holy fuck Ch when i had that interview uh with uh, chavo and uh, joe which joe fucked up uh and we never heard <laughs> that again um this guy is not just one of the most intelligent wrestlers i've ever met he's one of the most intelligent people I've ever met like that no, interview, Ch Ch chavo it, guerrero jr is uh, and again i know you talk about disco but chavo is an amazing well, no i'm talking about chavo now I, I oh, you're talking about Chavo. You oh, gotta okay. keep up there. Keep up there. Um, Sorry, I'm eating a burrito. I thought you were half black. You should at least be able to run. But um, fact I is, run yeah, you, bro. Um, when it, <laughs> you know, that. when it, we had this interview, when we had me and Joe had this interview with this guy. Again, it's not just that he's an, and it blows blows me away that there are extremely intelligent people that are wrestlers that are fucking geniuses, like straight up fucking geniuses. Okay, but this guy. This guy was one of the most intelligent people I spoke to in my life. And it was just such an amazing interview, not just to get his wrestling take, but just a real life take and, and to hear his responses and how eloquent he was and how intelligent he was with his answers. It was like, it was a treat to fucking talk to that guy. It's night and day with, with a lot of people in the business. Cause again, I mean, this is the same guy that, you know, even in ventures and wrestling, like, I think he wanted to start, like, I'm not sure if he started the promotion with uh, Alberto or something like that, but he was going to start something in Mexico on his own dime or whatever. And he's not scared of doing that. Matter of fact, his father, Travis senior, I believe was running a promotion at one point uh, when Shawn Michaels was in that promotion for a little while. And uh, this is like really early Shawn Michaels. So like, yeah, he comes from the wrestling family. But yeah, but dude, the Guerrero family, very good business-wise. Very good. Luke Orja says, Rostafa eating a burrito. So automatically that reminds him of Chavo Guerrero. Well, maybe Chavo's burritos are a bit big. You know what I'm saying? Well, and who no, doesn't just, like burritos, you know? Beef, it was just a beef, beef burrito. That was, a, it was nothing too fancy. Does it have a little crema inside, you know? No. 
like the real burrito. No, it was actually it was actually very poor, but it was the only thing I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna eat like tonight. So there you go. Well, I guess that guy's lucky that you didn't shoot him in the face with your gun. At yeah, I know, right? It would have been like a Dick Cheney situation, but none, none of the less. No, no, but, um, you, you got the black pass, so you can shoot people. Yeah. Biden's uh, like, no, trust me, anybody can shoot anybody these days. I mean, it's easily did, was there good food on that uh, cruise, by the way? I, I'm always interested in food talk, but uh, it, it, honestly, uh, <laughs> certain places were okay. Everything else was bad. So it was just <laughs> gruel that you, you'd be lined up and they'd be like, serve you gruel like in a fucking prison line. It's just like, put it this way you talk about running earlier, thick. Dave. Dave, you talk about running. Everybody was trying to run off the ship just to get some decent food. I bet. I bet. <laughs> it's like, hold on. This place is on, on Yelp here. I'm seeing this place uh, had 50 people die from food poisoning. Fuck it. Dude, they didn't even have Yelp worse. out there. They didn't even no, have I know, Yelp I know out people, there. I know, people that worked on, I know people that worked on cruise ships and stuff, and they would rather deal with fucking dysentery that you would get from uh, some unknown island than the food that they were given there on the ship. Oh, so, bro, we were in, we were in Fiji. And that was like the first time I've actually had a, uh, an actual coconut chopped from the tree and then had the coconut water. It was so good. Oh, delicious. Yeah. And you're oh blind. possible. <laughs> no comment. Anyways, I, um, I, I got to keep this spicy tonight. But yeah, let's go back to wrestling talk, I guess. Or what do you guys want to talk about? More coconuts? Or uh, well, well, I mean, since I've been away for a little bit. So yeah, like, tell us about your great adventures on the high seas. Well, based based on and we're gonna keep it towards AEW because I know Luke Ross is having a field day saying don't talk about WWE. Um, with that being said, Dave, I mean, we we talked about this before MJF was the champion, right? Are you foreseeing that by the time we get to next January, not only is he still gonna have the strap, but we're fixing to say he's remaining in AEW, right? No, I wouldn't say the latter. I'll say this: I think that up to the absolute end, he will hold that title. Yes. Will we see a CM Punk situation? It's possible. I would hope not because it's been done. So, Tony, I know that you're listening. Call me. I keep telling you, buddy, call me. But um, I can see it coming close to that. I just don't necessarily see it going that way. However... I'm not going to discount the possibility that that would be very good for business. Um, we're we're not, unfortunately, people, we're not going to see a CM Punk repeat where MJF shows up on uh, WWE, has the AEW title because they're not going to allow it. Oh, WWE, no, 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 there's no way. There's no, no, just, no, in this day and age. But hold on, hold on. We had some of the greatest of that. In the past, when Ric Flair came to WWF, he had the actual title. Eventually, they started to blur it, but they were sort of acknowledging another uh, promotion existed. So would it be good for business for AEW? Absolutely, because it gets people on their eye, on their brand, eyes on their brand. Uh, at this day and age, would uh, WWE do it? Absolutely not, because... WWE is pussies, and they can't even acknowledge a smaller competition that blows them out of the water when it comes to important things. They so have. They're not going to see that, but it would be funny to see. And more importantly, I still think that Tony Khan would allow him, like MJF, to hold the title till the absolute end. I, I was just going to mention this. Like, they have acknowledged AEW in subtle ways, sometimes more direct, but very, very few times WWE has. But with AEW, and again, the fact that you're a wrestling, uh, you're just a wrestler and you're part of a wrestling brand, at this point after the whole Bret Hart uh, situation, even after the whole Alundra uh, Blaze slash Medusa situation, that's just not good ethics. And even though that WWE could be a douchebag and do that and let history repeat itself, remember, that also happened to them even years before that because Buddy Rogers was the NWA the champion. This thing is bad no. publicity, my friend. And in fact, nowadays, it would be even better if he was to show up on WWE and throw that in the trash. Oh, yeah, with social media would as it is. So many eyes on the fucking AEW. It's, well, like, it's not the way it was before, my friend. Not anymore. Well, again, with social media, everything is getting leaked anyway. So just the 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 idea of doing that. I mean, again, AEW being not that big of a promotion and WWE wanted to do that. I mean, granted, 
I could see that. But then you also look at it from this point of view. Wrestlers need to work. Wrestlers need to eat, right? So you do that to a brand, especially if they're not able to come back from it, which I highly doubt that would be even possible at this point because, again, Tony is doing a very, very good job at least maintaining a certain flow of, you know, of just consistency in the in the business it's not again it's is not as big as wwe at currently but it's definitely making noise in all the right places will be more successful in two three years hopefully yes in terms of maintaining a different type of audience and a bigger audience yes people still are hyping on aew just because oh they still can't even can be consistent with one million people watching per week and doing that consistently for a year dude they just started in 2019 Exactly. Also, Steve Brady calling you the N word in the chat. Oh, beautiful. Block him. Also, um, um, he says, "Holy shit, AW is in the Myron League, son." Jeff Jarrett, anyone, anyone, anything this guy touches is a joke. TK and Tony Schiavone, or he says, "Shit, Avani," uh, is a hack and fucking joke. Jarrett needs to retire and go away. Apparently, he's a WWE fan. Um, so he takes it in the pooper. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, Dave, I'm not dis- discrediting what you're saying in terms of like, you know, could that actually happen? I, I, I'm just saying I highly doubt it because I think at this no, point... I'm, I, I doubt it too, but, you know, I'm just imagining what would happen. I just don't think, like, when it comes to his the final end of his contract, if we're assuming that he is going to... Let's go two routes. He goes to WWE, lets the contract end, goes to WWE. He's going to hold that title to the end absolute end it doesn't make sense for anything else right but if so he let's stays, just say when he- then we see what happens but if he goes you know he'll come up obviously without the aw title and he'll start his run on wwe but either way um you know it just doesn't look in the cards that we're going to get what we did in the past with rick flair no, we're not. And and it, all due respect to MJF, like he's not Ric Flair by any means in terms of that type of. He's better according to him. So well, well again, well, even though they, most likely he's making more money than Flair and saving more money than Flair <laughs> in that regard. But um, in this retrospective, you know, idea where it's like, yeah, he's going to hold on to it the very last minute. I truly believe that and again i can definitely see mjf in wwe one day as of right now as he remains in his 20s i think that his best bet is to stick with aew as an american company in an american market keep that up maybe wrestle one time in japan maybe wrestle one time in mexico for like a big match right and then once like you know his second contract is up no matter how many years that is him going to WWE, he's going to be so ready to the point where, like, everyone's going to be anticipating it to the point where I highly doubt he's even going to go through NXT. They're just going to put him on the main roster. He's going to be the exception to the rule. But uh, yeah. over, overall, I mean, again, the match, the Iron Man match that we're going to be getting with uh, Brian Danielson and MJF, I'm actually really looking forward to this because I re- I'm more into the finish. For this match. And I normally don't say that about matches where it's like, you know what's going to happen, this and that. I'm mainly interested in the finish. Uh, what say you, Dave, as far as like, you know, the overall Iron Man match concept? It depends on how it's done. I, I actually do enjoy Iron Man matches. Um, the problem is with the limited, I think they work better on a pay per view, to be quite honest. Uh, yes. With a with a TV show, you're limited with time, and then like, oh well, it's a thirty minute time match or time TV time remaining. No, iron matches need to be allowed to just go, and there shouldn't be any pressure on the wrestlers. They know they've got sixty minutes. They've got the fucking clocks next to them. Fucking, they're looking at the time while they're wrestling. Let them do their thing. So if 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 anything, Iron Man matches should be specifically kept within the pay-per-view confine and it will be i believe that they said it's going to be at the next pay-per-view so um this is going to be one of those cases where again we are going to get the best in terms of a character taking on potentially one of the best if not the best in-ring performer right now in brian danielson um yes i yeah and yes we already we already know the finish and he's winding term- things down so why not end it up with you know, somebody who's clearly going to be one of the big new names in wrestling. 
So this little uh, few that they're setting up here, um, A, it gives uh, MJF the ability to go against somebody who clearly is one of the best in the world, but also to to get the experience necessary. So I think it would be better for, you know, it's going to be good for his character to be doing that sort of thing. And again, he's going to, he's, uh, and I said this before, Dave, and again, I don't know if this is going to be as consistent with um, what's going to be happening in the year, but I said last year, put him through every former WWE talent, like a Brian Danielson, or like obviously John Moxley as he did. How would you book that though? Like who? Who are you talking about? So obviously Brian Danielson, but who else? Like you put him through a, some sort of like gauntlet. Who else would you like WWE? Because you're saying specifically WWE. Well, who else and why? Well, before I get to who else, here's why. Because remember that promo that he had with CM Punk where it's just like, you know, he was talking about a lot of the WWE superstars in a sense, like, you know, I'm even better than the guys you can even, you know, handle with Stanford or something of that nature. And I remember thinking to myself, what if, what if, if he does become champion, he runs through all the WWE guys basically saying, hey, I not only beat your best, but even if I was there, I'd still be the best and I don't even have your title. He already has a storyline going into the company. Yeah, actually, so, that would be quite good because he would he'd be able to come back and be like, I beat you either here, like, I beat you, and, you know, even if you weren't here sort of thing, something like along those lines where it's like... Yeah, like, like it's like a I Marvel Universe type thing. your best. Didn't matter if I was here or not, I beat your best. And guess what? Maybe they, they were your best because they left. You know, something like that where it's just like, you, you know... <laughs> I went to the other place because that's where all your former guys were, the good guys, and now I'm coming to here. Like, imagine him, like, pulling that sort of shit off, insulting them, like saying AEW is better, but by not really saying AEW is better, you know? Right, and like I said, he already beat Jericho in a, in a great feud. He beat Punk. He beat, um, you know, a John Moxley, and he's most yep. like – He's going to beat Brian Danielson. So I like the Moxley battles between him. I, I've heard some people complain about it, but I do like the Moxley battles with him and MJF because, uh, or MJF and him, uh, because I think they they really went far. Um, you had them both uh, really w willing to uh, risk things and to put on a good performance. So, and Moxley, in my opinion, always puts on a good performance. Yeah, and I'm just happy the fact that, like, you know, again, he, he's doing this thing, even though, like, right now, it, and we we both know this, Moxley is the MVP of that company in the sense of him, you know, even during the whole punk scandal, like, you know, again, he remained and finished business where he still could have been taking time off with his family, but no, he's here, he's working, he's doing his thing. Uh, the beginning of last year, he took care of his sobriety, and now he's just, like, in a, in a different place right now. Um, Joe's back with us. We're just basically talking about like, you know, the overall feel of like, you know, the main event yeah. situation. No, I heard, I heard everything. Um, I just, uh, yeah. I wanted to acknowledge too, real quick, uh, don't know earlier by down syndrome Bruins logo. Um, just want to say thank you. You raised a piece of shit for that. It's been psychologically proven. Dave Rose sucks cock. Well, dick in the dirt is all elite. There you go. Um, what has, has me here. I don't yeah, know okay. who that is. And John, I will knock your dick in the dirt. Um, I I think we I you know I I think we can um close out on our final statements here I suppose uh, before I take us home, um and I get ready for the big cocksucker tomorrow. I'm gonna be sucking cock tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, so what did you what did you think? Anything else you guys wanted to get to? I mean, I think we kind of nailed it all. I just. We ran through everything I think that that mattered. I, you know, I, I will say I don't think we talked a lot about some things tonight, but pretty much everything that mattered we talked about. I think the women, you know, had issues, fell flat. What did what did you, anybody? I haven't heard anybody say anything about the page situation. What did you think of that? Was that just like what is this? Like, she, I don't know. I didn't time. really catch too much of it, so I can't really give an, an official opinion about it, really. Okay, so it's ill-timed, in my opinion, because you actually had people who thought, because Paige was going to pick her, basically pick her a, a tag team partner tonight. Like, well, I'm going to announce who my secret partner is. And some people thought that that meant tonight she was coming out to have a match, and it, that was happening tonight. So some people thought it was going to be like Sasha Banks, Monet, whatever her name is now. Which, Mercedes by the way, Monet. congratulations. She's now a part of NJPW, and she's going to be working with various other different promotions. Dude, Great job. That was fucking horrible. It, it didn't go well for the first night, though. 
I mean, yeah, no, so I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not putting her over in a sense of the performance. I was just no, saying congratulations, you're working again. Oh, well, she's good. making tons of money is what she's doing everywhere she goes. I mean, that's why her name is like... Well, she, she spent that whole hundred grand on booze, apparently. She should have put dollar signs in her hair. That disgusting hair. That might, that might have been that might have been a trademark He's gimmick. Hair. She's gonna stop with the fucking hair. She's gonna go bald soon. She keeps doing this shit. He's She's gonna end up looking like Jada Pinkett Smith way. from uh, The Matrix. Dude, out of the whole night, she was the worst part. That's pretty fucked. Really? Uh, that's what I thought. I thought that like out of all the hype, she she fucked. It was the biggest botch of the night, other right. than the old folks in the first match. You yeah, know? the big WWE star comes in and fucks oh, matter of up. fact, real quick, Joe. I, I mean, again, I know you probably didn't watch it, obviously, but do you have an opinion on the Will Osprey Kenny Omega U.S. title match? I don't because I haven't seen it yet. Okay, please watch it. I thought I it was. A, it. I thought it was a good match. I bet you. You know, it's one of those things that, like, I'll probably watch that. Is what I thought. Who won? Did Osprey win? No, it uh, was think... uh, well, well, Omega. I didn't want to spoil it, but yeah, it's Omega. All right, well, I thought, well, no, I thought and, it and I'm glad that Omega. Oh, you're right. You won. Yeah. I thought Omega would win, but um, yeah, yeah, you know, this was the first year where I felt like, hmm, man, maybe I should have watched it because, like, it was good, good. Night. Yeah, like last couple of years, I I didn't watch and I didn't feel anything about it. I was like, you know what, I'm not watching. But you know, this year I actually felt like I I wanted to watch it in a weird way. But I just know wrestling is so down right now that it's not worth covering. Yeah, there's and- only a few matches that I actually really enjoyed personally. Yeah. Love and, 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 and I love you matches, man. I don't. I'm not Say a fan again. of the fucking time that they air, but uh, you know, I, yeah. I like that. I love the. I love the feel. I love the look. I mean, dude, this was the first. Actually, this was the first time I watched one of their papers. I love the I noticed, I love the mm-hmm. I, I, I When are they dude, going like... to show the stream? <laughs> I love that. When are you going tits. to show the stream? I have been waiting on the show all night to watch the stream. <laughs> we have I we have bad reception. Like... We're sorry, Raheem. Uh-huh. Rahim. Honestly, I was really surprised because uh, a lot of the this shit is fucking that people bullshit. Bring, they bring a lot of that style over here to the states, and I feel like it's overdone. But when I watched that pay per view last night, which was actually my first uh, New Japan pay per view to watch, I felt like the timing of it—it it was almost like tonight with AEW. I thought it was really well done, and I'm like, well, why can't when when they Americanize it, why can't we fucking get it right? Do you well, actually, the no, but hold on. Uh, do you watch? Do you watch NJPW? He doesn't. No, no. But but I but but all this time, what I've heard about it is, oh, this is why it's all so uh, so fast paced w- when it comes to America, and there's no sense to it, and all this shit I hear. But when I watch New Japan, I go, this was perfect. Like the match times were perfect. It was like 15, 20 minute matches. They were really well done. I was really pro, uh, except except the battle royal because the battle royals usually are <laughs> just hard what to was get. That? Was that the free one? I didn't yeah. see that. Well, no shock, yeah. no shock. The people who invent, who you know, came up with that style, perfect it pretty well compared to over here. It was really, I, I, dude, I'm gonna. That won't be my last time watching. I, I was very. Do you remember when uh, I stayed up for surprised. Wrestle Kingdom 14 and 13, Jesse? I was like dead. You remember me? I covered it Which live. Which year was that? 2016 and 15, I want to say. 2016 and 17, yeah. Yeah. Well, well I uh, think the problem is, is... I don't even think I was there. I think, I think the problem is is they, they have great matches, but, I mean, the storylines just aren't captivating enough to draw in enough people. I mean, like, dude, every time I see, Please like, New Japan, it's always, like, like, Bullet Club betrays another member or Bullet Club introduces <laughs> another member. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah all these fuck factions, at this right? point. It's yeah. it's more yeah. it's more built Fuji, like a, like an arcade Fuji game. Sawa. It's no, it, it's built like Mortal Kombat or like like an arcade game where it's like exactly. this guy versus this guy. Now epic fight happened. Like that's what. But it always ends with. Imagine yeah. if it always ended with ice, like with Sub Zero winning. You know, <laughs> like or Sub Zero and Scorpion somehow always end up winning. Like, like that's the that's the thing. Like. It's either fucking um, Okada champion or one of those other fucking, you know, yeah. I was going to say someone else, but, you know, I don't yeah, want yeah, the yeah. stream Okada, to get shut Okada, down. <laughs> Okada is basically their undertaker, their Austin in terms of, you know, somebody who's a staple of the company who won't leave and he's just dedicated to the company. 
Um, yeah, and, but they didn't and, put the belt. They didn't put the belt on Undertaker like for like five hundred oh, oh, years. No, 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 you know? no, I know that. I'm not. I'm not saying it in terms of belts. I'm just saying it in terms of staples. And he is one of the staples of that company. Who, by the way, lifted the company up after they were in the dark ages for so long and um, got even more attention when he and Omega had that six star match uh, yeah. when that Joe was referred to. Over, uh, you know, which by the way. I had known about these guys for so long, but never watched it. And up until the fact that everybody was talking about how great that match was between Omega and Okada, then I watched it and I just became an NJPW fan. It it was just great. But um, yeah, the last couple of years have been very, very lackluster in terms of Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, When they went to two nights, I was just like, damn, this is going to be over exhausting, especially the time zone difference. So I would have to watch it the next day. But um, it, it, it's that last night, there were definitely a, a few matches that were just like, oh, my God, I love this. But, again, okay. uh, the time-lapse difference, all that. And then, of course, also the follow-up show, which is kind of like their Monday Night Raw in uh, – I forget which – I forget the hall that, that it's called. Uh, it's like a small little arena. Uh, and uh, they do like their sort of kind of setup for like the next couple shows as mm-hmm. well as the big shows that come up in the future. So we'll see what happens with that. But other than that – Overall tonight, AEW Dynamite, um, I'm keeping it at a 7.5. I thought it was good, and I thought uh, they definitely need to keep up this momentum going forward, especially with the uh, NFL Sunday Super Bowl coming up. Yeah, really well done. Uh, I almost want to give it an 8 tonight, but I'm going to – I'm going to go 7.5 as well because I I, I do think they've had – yeah, I don't know, man. I'm going to give them – fuck, it's hard. Dave, what do you give it? Give it an 8. I have to give it a probably an eight. Actually, tonight was really good, yes. and that last match was just a great way to top off the entire night. He convinced I, me. I mean, I'm going. I eight. actually thought that Samoa Joe was going to keep the title, but just mm-hmm. the match itself, even if fucking Allen didn't win, uh, was still fucking impeccable. So him winning that was it actually unbelievable. Great. David and Goliath, game right there. That was yeah, very much. very much, very much. Yeah, you can't fucking beat that. That was the best way to end the night. I, fuck. You guys like to see them again, like at a pay per view? Those yes. two? Yeah. I, yes. I'd love to see them at a pay per view. I, 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 I I'd love to see uh, Cassidy versus uh, uh, Allen at a pay per view. I'd like to see them in a last standing match now after that. But, uh, let, yeah. Dude, I've never seen Orange Cassidy do more than the same three fucking things, though. Well, I'm then so you know what? For then, it, then this is what you need to do. You need to do this. You need to watch the match with him and fucking uh, Osprey. Will Osprey? Uh, what, mm. what, I can't remember what uh, pay per view it was, what AW pay per view, but they went at each other and it was fucking incredible. Do you remember what? I year did not Osprey? know that fucking Orange Cassidy could move this that. This was about way. four months ago or so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Fucking incredible, dude! I blew me away. I, like I, I'd seen some of the stuff in the Indies. I could see he moved well, but you know I was getting a little tired of the gimmick in in AEW. When he had that match with Osprey, who also blew me away through his fucking performance, it was incredible. Uh, yeah, and fucking Orange Cassidy lost, but man, was that fucking match amazing! And and, and, and isn't I'm that just, ironic, Dave? It was good. If somebody doesn't have to win in order to have one of the best matches on the card, and they're so yes. about. Yes, yeah. we've seen that a lot from AEW. Can you say that about fucking WWE? Not Don't really. Think so. It's weird because I, I mean I, I could not. say that I could say that a few times, but I mean I, I, nobody'd I, listen. So. I, 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 forbidden you know. door. I don't remember if it was, but it was in America. All I, that's all I remember. I gotta go back and I fuck. Just, I've been, I like when Cassidy. I just want to see more from him. That's all. You know. Yeah, I think they keep it. They I think they they, they keep it simple with him, whether that's they wrong do. or right yeah. or whatever. The, the best friends, like they yeah. they don't allow him to really go over the top, but when they do, we get amazing shows. I, and I don't. I find Orange. Uh, I mean, rather Osprey. Sometimes I don't know what it is, but I'm annoyed by Osprey. But that so match, was, I don't know why. But that match was wonderful. Like it was really, I'm not really good. Not myself either, Joe. But uh, yeah, uh, he did a he did a good job. Yeah. So it's it's they can do it, and it's he's got that in him. But they really don't show it to you often. Ninety percent of the time, it's just the gimmick, and he. Does the same, which is, you know, all right. I think that somewhere in the middle would be nice. Matches recently. Even Orange Cassidy has had some good mass- matches uh, for yeah. the uh, uh, All Atlantic. He's got a good mass. He's got a good mass. Is that what you're going to say? I will knock your dick Fucking in the dirt. Yeah, I'll oh. knock your dick so, in the dirt. 
So did the um did the cowboy princess come out or what? I mean, like, yes, he did, and he gave that on? promo that you just heard. He gave a terrible promo. No, it was it was uh, okay, but it wasn't. It was weird. I'm probably gonna go over it tomorrow. I was gonna break it down tonight, but honestly, it could take thirty minutes, and I gotta get out of here. I'm past my 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 bedtime here. Um, I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna give it an eight. You guys convince me. I'm gonna go up to an eight. I I I love so much. Why would I not? You know, at this point, I think there was like three or four things that I loved. And then other stuff was pretty good. And there was a couple of downer things, but whatever. I was entertained, so it's getting an 8 tonight. I'm going to give it a goddamn 8. Maybe it should be a 7.8, yeah. but it's an 8. I'm going up to an 8. So um, there you go. Everybody, hey, listen, everybody listening, thank you guys for sticking with us all night long, listening this long. Thank you to Soundwave92 for the donation earlier. And thank you to Allison, who actually should have been up here this entire thing um, because she dropped a $199 bomb. Uh, so Allison, you want one ninety nine? I'll suck your ass off. I'm sorry. Um, so I had a good night. Sasha Banks debuted. Weird hair, love it, but weird botched. Whatever it was, that sucks. You flew all that way, and whoops. <laughs> duh, duh. She flew. got pizza. She got like pizza on her hair or something. Yeah, pizza it's tits. Cool looking. Leah said she looks like she's the octopus <laughs> that kills people. Her hair. <laughs> I don't know, but apparently that's a thing. Wait, what? Wait, she's the octopus that ki- like just a, a random octopus. No, it's like, like the most deadliest one from a movie. No, apparently there's like the most deadliest octopus, and it like it looks like her hair. That's what Leah said. She's oh, like, oh, okay. she looks like. Hold on, I'll show it to you right now. There it is. I don't know. I get. I, I see what Leah's saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, but is it worse hair than fucking? Um... Well, yeah, you, you, it's close enough. See what I mean? Yeah, that's what she meant. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I think it's fire, though, is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fire, but, oh, my God, this girl needs to stop fucking dyeing her hair. Like, just keep it one color and try to go back to her natural color, Mercedes, because eventually you're going to go bald with all this fucking... Uh, She'll look like yeah. Jada Pickett-Smith, I'm telling you. This and is she getting, shit. like, is she I getting, like, like her plastic hair. surgery? Is she getting plastic surgery, or am I just noticing that, like... All these women wrestlers Whoa. seem to just be doing shit to their face. And Guys, it seems to be deteriorating. I what? Oh my it, god, Jennifer it, Muppet it, Baby. Remember her cabin? She was talking about her cabin the other day in her yeah. Christmas tree. I have the photos. That looks beautiful. That looks awesome. That is on, awesome. Oh, that does look nice. Look at that. Is that dude. her vagina? I, I can't see it on stream. Right, We're talking you know, about her cabin, right? It's a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Dude, this is wicked cool. I love this. Wow, that Fucking Christmas girl. tree is awesome. That looks like Christmas, dude. That's real Christmas right there. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, hey, look, at, look at the size of that tree. That's a 12-footer. That's what she said. It's nice. Man, I'll tell you what. If I could live here. That looks like. <laughs> I mean, I you know. You have to move to Canada first. I can live here. Move up to Canada. That looks like the set. That looks like Dexter's house from the latest season of Dexter, bro. Like, seriously, that looks really cool. It's Very Christmassy. Dexter, Plus, you can hang yourself if you want from the ceiling. If it thinks, can you? Yeah, if things well, don't go too well. Auto, the banister. There. You could jerk yourself off while you do it, too, you know? Wow. Nine-foot yeah, tree. That's the only way I'm going out. Nine-footer. Damn, Jen, that's awesome. Wow, look at her tree. She really does love no, this that's, shit. That's taller than nine feet. I'm sorry. How do you have more? She has more ornaments than, than I mean, like... Wow. That's a lot of electricity going through that tree. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah. Those yeah. ornaments really ruined the tree. Uh, I mean, didn't yeah. really need that many. Wow. So, some was jealous. Horrible tree. I love her. Three tree. out of ten. Wow. Man, imagine getting her just on top. Well, never mind. All right. Uh, I love Jennifer. Um, I'm out of here, guys. You have a good night. Hey, thanks for coming on, guys. You made the show great. We had a lot of voices tonight. Pacharo didn't get to say anything, but. He never does. When are people going to be able to see that when Star Trek? This oh, yes, guys. Uh, tomorrow, uh, there is a Star Trek uh, episode on Star Trek Late Night, my other YouTube channel. If you're a Star Trek fan, go subscribe, Star Trek Late Night. And uh, Dave's breakdown of, of this game and Star Trek Classic is is going to be up tomorrow, sometime in the afternoon around 1 p.m., debuting. It's going to be great. Star Trek Late Night, subscribe. Um, I've put out a couple videos on there. I'm going to put out a couple more coming up this week. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Talk about his favorite show, Picard. Picard's coming out. Joe, um, 
why Star Trek the motion picture is a great movie still. I'd love to do it. I love that movie. Yeah. I'd be, I actually I would love to listen to that as a matter of fact. It puts me to sleep. And that's that where movie. they got the, And that's where they got the theme to Next Generation, right? Right. Yes. Yes, you are correct. I didn't know. I, I, I think forgot they modified that. it a bit. They and made it a little bit better in Next Generation. Yeah, they did the original theme. The the original TNG theme like sounded like more like a I don't know, like a submarine battle show or something, or a navy show. It was like da 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 da. It was like weird, and they like merged. I've been getting them. into it a lot. I've been watching a lot of Next Generation. I w I was gonna say like I was gonna watch the rest of Voyager because I kind of started with that, but I mean I've heard bad things about it, so I don't know. No Voyager. Voyager is Doctor Pulaski. Jesus. Oh. Voyager's on the lower end know. of things usually. Voyager is one of the lower uh, liked ones. I like Voyager, but it starts to fade away in the last couple seasons. What the heck is going on? Somebody is like, I don't know, they're rustling around in their sheets while they're on the call. I mean, that's Pacheco. That's uh, Picaco. And <laughs> Charo. That's it. We're out of here. Listen, next time, Pacheco. <laughs> um, have a good one. Guys, hey, I already have a good one. Now I'm looking for a longer one. Um, oh, I yeah, love so you. we'll talk a lot of Star Trek with Rojas coming up soon with Dave and Rojas. It'll be amazing. All right. Picard season three is coming. All right. Good night, guys. Hey, man, have a good night, guys. Thank you. Uh, seriously. Thanks for being here. Love yes, you guys. Sir. I love you guys. Welcome. Seriously. Ro uh, Rostafa, welcome back to the to the States, brother. Um, And everybody else, man, thank you guys so much for being here all night. And thank you for listening to this show. For clicking the like button if you can. And for becoming patrons on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. I'll have some stuff up there. We do hope to rattle off the corrupted podcast back again. That's something we are doing. We really didn't get to talk about the women portion again here, but I just thought it was kind of weird. Didn't really not not the best part of the show tonight. I could probably talk more about this tomorrow too. Um I really do want to break down that Adam Page promo and I'll do it tomorrow if I do it. Until then. Thanks for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. Share it. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell everybody. Why don't you eat the cheese out of your mother's vagina before you kill her? It's not fun for me. That's that's funny. That's that's funny. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. And Allison Tuckwab. Thanks for dropping bombs, baby. You just made the list. I miss Dan Kennedy tonight. Dan, I hope you're okay, man. Shout out to Dan Kennedy, brother. I hope you're sleeping well, cozied up in the Betty by. I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Seriously, thank you. Good night. ring if it's in catering if it's on the roof i will fight john moxley and john i will knock your dick in the dirt oh well there's no dirt here but here comes mox When I plan to act pompous, you shall certainly know. I'm gonna gargle your piss!